right now, maybe you look like this or like this, maybe even like this. The point is it doesn't matter because the way you look now is simply a math problem. And like all math problems, there's a way to solve it. In this video, we're going to go into the eight ratios that determine your body, how it looks, how it feels, and even how it operates. If you get this right, going from this to this becomes automatic, just like two plus two equals four. You simply can't go wrong. Let's get into it. So the first one that we're going to talk about is what I call the planned versus YOLO ratio. How much of your life, of your training, of your diet is based on planned routines that you already know what you're going to do versus the YOLO. For example, let's take training. A lot of people have set training days. This is very good. I know I'm going to train Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. How about you? Now, when I ask this question, if you have a clear day and time that you train, you're already in the good. But if you're like, mm, it depends, I already kind of know how you're going to look, man. No offense. It's not that great because you're doing more of the YOLO training where it's like, oh, today's a good day. It's not raining. My friend wants to train. There's nothing else on. I feel kind of motivated. This is a training day. Yeah. And then another day, it's kind of rainy. It's in the middle of England. It's stuffy. I got work stuff that I got to catch up on guess no gym today. So that's YOLO. Let's talk about what happens when you actually get in the gym. How many of you have a planned routine that exactly tells you how many sets, how many reps, which exercises, how hard to push versus, oh, I'm going to go do chess today. Let me watch some chess videos on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to do this and this and this. Keep some of the exercises from last session. So change some, add in this Chris Bumstead exercise. Just kind of YOLO it. Just go until you feel tired. So many people train like this. I know this because I literally guide people through this and I see people in the gym doing this. This makes sure that you will get mediocre progress because you're just YOLOing it and there's no structure and definition in how you do the exercise. So there's no structure and definition in how your body looks. If you actually want that structured system, so you stop YOLOing your life, but you have a planned routine and the ratio of that planned training goes way high as opposed to the YOLO training, check out Aesthetic Body Blueprint. It's the first link in the description. It's going to absolutely change your body and give you that planned structure. So go check that out. Let's move on. Just imagine I meet you and I'm like, yo, just drink this. And I shove like some milkshake in your mouth. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, okay, I'll drink it. Okay, hey, man, have this cheeseburger as well. How are you going to look? You're going to look round and pudgy. But the more times you're like, no, dude, I don't eat that shit. No, get that shit out of my mouth. I don't eat that. The more you set boundaries with your mouth, the clearer your boundary is to the world, aka your skin becomes taut, your muscles become tight, and your body becoming hardened as a boundary against the world that can't penetrate as opposed to squishy and just infiltratable, right? You're just taut and tense. That's what you want. And how do you do that? By saying no. Well, and it's what I call the yes to no ratio. How many times you say yes to stuff versus how many times you say no. And the more you say no, the better your body looks. And the reason for this is life is always going to throw you temptations and things that can deviate you from your plan. And the more times you can say, nah, uh, it's my training day. Hey man, let's meet at 11 a.m. on Tuesday. You want to do the meeting then? Because that's when I can do it. Uh, sorry, man, I can't do that. I got, I got gym. Oh yeah, man, but you can do the gym later. No, I can't. I'm doing the gym. Hey man, you want to come out on Saturday and uh, get a drink? It's this thing. And it's like, yeah, it's all a bit of fun. Like, yeah, no. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So increase the yes to no ratio. In other words, say no way more than you do now. Next, if you didn't even train in the gym, if you didn't even do the walks and you literally did nothing from this video and just took one thing and just changed it and it will change your body, it would be this. A lot of people complicate the diet and they're like, what's the macro spirit? How many grams of fat? How many grams of protein? Relax, okay? All that stuff is just confusing you. It's just making you think about too many things and you're like, why can't I just enjoy a little pizza like I did today? I had margarita today and just not worry about proteins, fats, carbs. What you want to do instead as a guy who's just getting into the gym and starting to care about his diet is focus on just increasing the ratio of protein on your plate or even down to the spoon. Right now, don't even worry about one gram per pound of body weight, all that, you know, gym bro nonsense. Just say, look at my plate. Right now, there's a whole bunch of rice, whole bunch of potato, whole bunch of bread, whatever your preferred carb is. And then there's a little bit of salad and then there's a tiny little bit of meat maybe. The ratio is messed up. One, he said increase the protein ratio. So that doesn't mean just chug four freaking chicken breast things on the side or just have like five protein shakes. I mean, you could do that. But when I talk about the ratio, like it could be on the same plate. You're just increasing the amount of meat portion and reducing the amount of carb portion. Increasing the protein is important, but reducing the carb is also important because if you want to build that lean aesthetic taut body, you want to lose fat. And if you have loads of carbs, it's just going to make it really hard for you to lose fat because carbs make you eat more. And if you eat a lot of protein, it's going to keep you full, which means you're not going to eat too 
too much during the day, which is going to help you get lean. Does that make sense? Of course, it helps you to build muscle and all that as well. So just focus on switching that ratio where you go high protein, low carb, what I am calling protein dominant meals. Next, now there's a lot of people, especially nowadays with the popularity of running, that are opting for cardio as their way to build muscle or lose fat. They'll do climbing, bouldering, running, cycling, everything except weights. Because weights is for gym bros, weights. I mean, I'm not a freaking meathead. I don't want to be in the gym with these stinky ass meat bros. So you opt for cardio. Now the ratio is very, very important. If you don't do weights, you won't look like a guy that is lean and athletic. Usually, if you see a guy that has a physique that looks good with some muscle, with visible abs, with good shoulders and chest, this guy almost always trains in the gym. There are exceptions, don't get me wrong, there are exceptions, but most of the time these guys will be training. And I think most people that have that perception of gym as being a gym bro activity, they go too far towards cardio and too little towards weights. And I think a good way to do this would be somewhere in the 50-50 or in most guys cases, to be honest, if your priority is to look good and lose fat, it should be 80-20, 80 weights, 20 cardio. That would be the wise ratio. Now, as somebody like me that loves sports like jujitsu, soccer, like I just love it. It's not really to look good. I just love doing it. For me, it's more like 50-50, 60 40 in favor of weights realized that i didn't give a clean number to any of these like three to one four to two five to one because i can't give you that number it has to be personal to your goals having said that there is this thing called the pareto principle so it's a really good general rule of thumb to go by when you're thinking about what's a ratio that is smart think 80 20 80 percent no 20 percent yes 80 percent planned 20 percent yolo 80 percent movement 20% static. Usually a good metric. Not always, again, depends on your goal. Next, seated and lying down on a couch versus moving, walking, going to the bathroom, standing up. Genuinely think about the ratio because you might think you move a lot, but you just stand up, go sit in another chair, stand up, go sit in another couch. They did a study on this, how immobility, like if you kept somebody immobile for like two to three weeks, all of their metrics in terms of their health, their stress, their dopamine levels, everything would just plummet. Your muscle mass, all of that starts to go down because you're not moving human beings our bodies evolved through movement in the wild walking hanging fighting running it's only really this modern society this last let's say i don't know 300 years where we've become so static and immobile because the world has been made too convenient so if you are somebody that moves a lot if you've got a mobile job then you're going to get in a lot of steps what does that mean the chances of you being lean is higher than somebody who just sits at his desk all the time you're much less likely to develop joint problems because you're moving your body all the time as opposed to a guy who sat on his ass not doing anything and then he develops back pain neck pain shoulder pain pain, freaked out posture. If you want to look good, leaner, if you want to feel good, you have to improve the movement to static ratio. The easiest way you can do this in a measurable way is to just get your steps up. Because as soon as I say the word steps, what does that mean? You're up from your desk and moving. This is why walking is so powerful. It's not just for the joints. It's not just for fat loss. It's for your mood. It's for just the ability to keep your whole body moving and functioning. Just like a bike that gets ridden is nice and smooth as opposed to a bike that's sitting in the garage just gets rusty and cranky. It's the same with your body. Next, like I'd wake up one day and I'm sitting in the sun getting good sleep and I feel like I just need to use this energy. I need to go to the gym and absolutely destroy those weights. I want to break the barbell. I don't feel like that every day, but there are some days where I'm literally just like, I need to just destroy something. Testosterone makes effort feel good. It also increases your libido, increases your competitive edge. So we want high testosterone. Now, I think what's happening in the modern world is that we're having too much estrogen as men due to, you know, overexposure to plastics, overexposure to like, hyper-processed food, and just not having enough sunlight, not getting enough sleep, chronic stress. So these are basically maybe not even increasing estrogen, just really lowering our testosterone to the extent that the ratio is now messed up. And not only does that affect how you look, it affects how you operate in the world and how you feel in your body. So you will feel less like motivated, less competitive, less powerful, less driven, less energy. We as men, we also do want estrogen. I think one of the biggest things that's misunderstood is that we think estrogen is just bad and testosterone is good. Or like in women, estrogen is good and testosterone is bad. But like we need a healthy 
balance of both. So when I speak about the ratio, I'm not saying just get mad high testosterone and tank all your estrogen because we do need estrogen as well as men. So what do you do? You gotta be taking steps to increase your testosterone to estrogen ratio. How do you do that? Number one, get good sleep. Number two, start lifting heavy weights. Again, not to exhaustion because if you do training until you're completely burnt out and feeling extremely tired, this actually tanks testosterone. If you diet in the wrong way and you go no carb and you go super high in calorie deficit, this also tanks your testosterone. So in order to keep testosterone at a good level, you need to get the training just right so you're giving it enough stimulus but not going until exhaustion. This is exactly what I do with Aesthetic Body Blueprint, my training system, so go get that if that's literally what you want. And you gotta get the diet right so that even though you're getting leaner, you're not cutting out all these carbs and fats, especially fats that are really, really necessary for testosterone. Next, now right now, I'm at about 72 kg. I don't know what that is in pounds, I'll put it up here. And I look kind of like maybe 13%, 14% body fat. I look pretty decent after a workout. I'm kind of happy with this level of leanness, but this is me basically eating around maintenance. Now let's take a week, my week, and we see how many days I spend in a surplus, how many days I spend at maintenance, how many days I spend in a deficit. And that ratio essentially determines how you're gonna look. And most people that are trying to lose body fat and get lean, you need to spend more of your week in a calorie deficit than in a surplus. I spend maybe four days in a deficit because it's still in a summer, and then about two days at maintenance and one day in a surplus because I also do go over sometimes, have pizza and a couple of drinks. There are other periods periods where I'm like five days in a surplus and two days at maintenance. That's when I'm kind of bulking and I realize shit, I got fat. And then there are weeks where I'm like over, let's say a whole month, I'm mostly at maintenance most of the time with minor surplus and deficit. It just shocks me how many people I ask like, okay, so what's your calorie goal? What's your calorie maintenance? And they don't know. Like you right now watching this, what is it? Say the number now. You don't know it. What the hell? Go search Google right now, calorie maintenance, and find out your number. Use light activity, that will work for most of you. And it's probably for men gonna be somewhere between 2300 and 2900. Some of the big guys will be 3000 or slightly above. And most women will fall between 1600 to 1900 or 2000. Get that ratio right. If you're trying to get lean, have more days in the week in a deficit. If you're trying to get bulkier and bigger, have more days in a surplus. Get that right first before you do anything else. Next, now you will realize that if I show you some bodybuilders that are training for bodybuilding competitions, they look a certain way. I personally don't think they look that good when they wear clothes, when they go on the stage. I mean, some of them, they look impressive. I'm very impressed by their physique, but I don't want that physique. Like when you wear the pants, it's like gonna explode. It just feels like you swapped your personality for a protein shake. Whereas if you look at soccer players, swimmers, UFC athletes, some of these guys look absolutely great. They're not big, they're kind of normal looking. Like if sometimes if you see them just chilling out in the street, you'd never tell that their body looks like that underneath. And that's the physique I like. I think that looks good in clothes, but more importantly, it feels different. So you know how you can tell that difference? That's the determined by the amount of training you do in the bodybuilding style, where it's just focused on how much tension I can bring to the muscle, how much growth and hypertrophy I can cause versus how much range of motion and how much dynamic and different kinds of movement that I might do. For instance, bodybuilders, I don't think would do exercises like ATG split squats or Cossack squats as much. They'll probably have more efficient ways to grow the quads and the glutes. They might not opt for things like a sissy squats and things like that. But if you're somebody that does jujitsu, all of these movements, single leg RDL, sissy squats, reverse Nordics, Nordics, these become very interesting movements for you because they apply to your sport because they mimic certain movement patterns that might occur in your sport or might help your balance or speed or agility or whatever, what have you. And this ratio is going to determine whether you look like a bodybuilder or somebody that has that kind of athletic look. And I think more and more now, the meta is going towards this lean athletic build and not the bodybuilder build. Like even just adding like sprinting once a week, hill sprints or just normal sprints, weighted knee raises, things like that will give you this X factor that I believe the guys who spend all day in the gym doing side lateral raises don't have. I hope this video helped improve these ratios. Again, I didn't give you a clean number on like one to three, five to five, six to one, because it depends on your goal. It depends what you're going for. It depends where you are starting right now. But a good rule of thumb is move those ratios in the right direction, see how it affects your body. And when you do those, you will genuinely see your body change.